craftsman vice has served me well for many years. But all good things come to an end. And it's time to put it out to pasture. Really uh, digging out the, the uh, metaphors here. So what's up? What's going on? Why? What's wrong with this vice? Well, it's not, uh, many of you have noticed uh, for years I have uh, been not, I've had the broken jaws on here and and many, several of you have said, well, you know, just replace the jaws, It'll, that's all you need. And, and that's not all there is to it. It's, it's just I have beat on it and pounded on it for 15 years and it's just, it's had it. It's, uh, it's very loose. It's, it's just, essentially, it's just worn out. This has been a good vise. It's a five and a half inch Craftsman USA made vise, but it never really was intended for the type of use I think that uh, I put it uh, towards. It's not uh, considered to be a, what I would say a professional tool uh, for, uh, but more, you know, maybe a lower, a higher end uh, homeowner style vise. So uh, I'm not complaining about it, but the, the simple matter of fact is, is it's just time for it to go. It, it just won't hold very good. It slips, the, the screw is stripping out. And that's it, that's it. So in today's video, we are gonna pr re replace the old craftsman with something a little bit better. Behold, a Snappy Tom vise. Snappy Tom, that's what my auto shop teacher used to call Snap-on tool, Snappy Tom. Snap-on, a Snap-on professional grade. Uh, this is a proper vise. Absolutely a proper vice. Uh, just uh, we are we are in industrial industrial mode here. We are talking about a um, this is a lifetime vice. This is many lifetimes. Uh, oh, just so such a great great tool. So much superior to the Craftsman in just so many ways. We'll do a little side by side here, and I'll show you. So where did I get it? Did I buy it new? No, nope, nope. I did not buy it new. This vice was gifted to me uh, by a friend who asked to remain anonymous. You know who you are, I wanna thank you very much. I'll think about you every time I use this. And this is a tool that is the quintess one of the quintessential items, that you, uh, just a must have item. If you're setting up a shop, I don't care even if you're just working out of a single car garage or in your basement, a five and a half inch vise, you don't need anything bigger than that, is the first thing you need to get. You don't need to go spend a bunch of money and get a new one. You can get an old one. I bought my old Craftsman 15 years ago on eBay for, that wasn't very much. I think it was like 60 bucks. I think the shipping cost more than what I paid for it. But this one here is the business. It is so, just so much better, so much more robust uh, than the other one. So many, so many more features that'll make, make it just a lot more usable and just better all the way around. Let's put them side by side here and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Now remember, both these vices are five and a half inch vices, but they're not the same tool, not, not by a, a long sight. So looking at the two vices side by side, I mean, it really starts to become apparent uh, <laughs> the difference between the two. Just look at the, the girth and the size of everything is just so much bigger, so much more robust. This is a good inch taller, fully uh, replaceable and rebuildable uh, bushings on the inside. Uh, rubber, we've got uh, rubber stoppers on there so you don't pinch your fingers when you drop it. Uh, look at the, just look at the dimensions of the base. That's a good full inch of cast steel right here versus the smaller one. One of the key differences, the thing that I've never liked about this vise, it's always been a real thorn in my side, is that when you're putting big stuff on it and you're really reefing on it, the only thing you have to prevent it from swiveling is this puny little screw right there. And the reason why that, or this little adjuster or whatever, you lock down, you know what I'm saying. It's just too small and there's only one of them. And the reason why it's all bent and, and wonky like that is because I have beat on it with a hammer for hundreds and hundreds of times, just trying to get it to, to stop moving around. It's always moving around, always flexing. Snap-on vise here, you can see great big, robust locking screws and two of them, not just one, got two of them there. And so that is not going to, uh, not gonna be an issue anymore. Not gonna have to pound on it with a hammer and, and, and go through all of that rigmarole. It's just gonna hold, it's just gonna be secure. The other thing that the Snap-on does is it rotates 360 degrees all the way around. You can just round, 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 and round. Where this one only rotates 180 
and then it stops. So that's not a very nice feature either. That's always, you know, you're always making compromises and, and uh, having to work at uncomfortable angles and such to accommodate that. Let's take a look at the sides. Here again, you can just see just the, over, just the mass and the girth of it, just so much bigger. And you don't have this, uh, this here is just a hollow channel. This is just a C channel, which is the main, uh, the main portion of the vise where the screw is, where the snap-on, you have a nice, thick, heavy steel round. It's a round, it's a cylinder, machinist type style of vise. Much stronger, no flex in it, it's gonna last a lot longer. It's just a vise that is uh, just gonna just really grip like a, like, like a gorilla. You got your pipe jaws in there for multiple sizes. You can grip small pipe, large pipe. This one has it as well. It's not as well defined. These are actually replaceable. Those, once they kind of lose their sharpness, you can, you can swap those out, put brand new ones in there. This one over here, they're just cast into the head. So again, you know, I'm not, I'm not comp saying that that's a crummy vice, or if you have one like that, that, that it's not gonna work for you, of course it will. I've, I've built hundreds and hundreds of things on it, and, and it's worked just fine for me. But I'm just kind of pointing out the difference between what you get with a kind of more of a homeowner style vice versus a full on professional vice here. Here you can see down from the top, you know, you can just really just getting a really idea of this, the girth and size of it, how much more so what a stable platform this would be. I don't think this vice is, look, look at the size of the, the, the bolt on there, or that, the head of that screw. Oh, quality, everything's got a part number, just quality. You're just not gonna find a better vice than this. You're just not, it just, it just doesn't exist. It's, it's as good as they come. It's been used a little bit, but very little. I mean, these edges on, these, on the replaceable jaws here are just crisp and sharp. Someone's, someone's used it to peen on there. There's the little dings in there. It doesn't hurt anything. No worse than mine. Um, but, boy, it's nice, isn't it? Look at the size of the base. I mean, the base is a good third bigger in, in footprint as well as um, bolt size and just the, just the heaviness of it. That's going to be a real nice, solid, solid piece. So I just wanted to share that with you. I'll do the, another part uh, in installing this. Um, I, you know how I am, I get talking and you know, time just goes by. I'm probably already at 10 minutes now. Haven't even done anything. Well, we have done something. We've gotten excited, haven't we? Uh, it's fun to share this stuff with you guys. It's, uh... no, it's fun, you know, I, mean, that's what th I guess that's one of the most important things in life is, is I think that's why I like being, um, I think that's why I like being married to Mrs. Wrangler Star. She asks me all the time, you know, or women, women like to have validation. You know, she asks me, you know, what, why, is, why do you love me? You know, why do you, uh, why do you marry me? Why do you continue to put up with me? Which is always a strange question to me because I, I always think it's the other way around. She's so easygoing, easy to get along with. And you know, the thing that comes to mind, first thing that comes to mind, it's kind of hard being put on the spot like that, but uh, I try to just speak my mind and the first thing that comes to mind. And the thing is, is that, is that I always tell her, and the, and the truth of the matter is, is uh, she's my favorite, she's my best friend, and she's my favorite person to share my accomplishments with, whether they be big things or small things. When I, uh, I make something in the shop, or even I make an axe, I don't know how many axe handles I've made. She's probably really tired of it by now. But the first thing I want to do, and the first thing that comes to my mind when I finish it, and I, I lay that boiled linseed oil on there, is uh, I take it in and I show it to her. You know, and, she, and she's, you know, bless her heart, she's always excited about it. I don't know if she really is. But she's my best friend, and, and it's uh, the, the thing that's one of the most important things in life is to be able to share those things that I'm really proud of or to, 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 sh to go to a new place and to look out over an amazing view or up in the mountains or see a high lake for the first time and to be able to share that with someone, and especially someone that you love, um, that's what makes life worth living. It would be, uh, you know, we've often, there's, there's movies about this, we've often thought about what it would be like to be the only person left on the, on the planet and that would be a miserable existence, wouldn't it? to not be able to share those triumphs and those joys and those excitements and to share your enthusiasm uh, with those that you love. And, and I love sharing um, things that I get excited about and enthusiastic about with you guys as well. Um, so, yeah, that's the point of this video. That's, that's all. So I'm going to um, 
We'll, we'll do another video and I'll install this. One thing I'll tell you though, if, if you are installing your vise or, or, or setting up your shop, make sure you put your vise on a corner post. You want it right on the corner of your bench. There's several reasons for that. One is that you can work at it from multiple sides because you'll have, well, you never know what you're going to be clamping in there, what you're going to need to be um, working on, but you can get to it and work on it from two different angles. It's really helpful. Not so helpful to have a vise right in the middle of a bench and it's always in the way. The other thing that, that is, makes it really nice is that uh, when you use a vise oftentimes for pounding on and, and if you don't have an anvil, that's what the back of that vise is for right there. That's for, you can do blacksmithing and work on the back of a vise, no problem. Guys have for uh, forever and still do all over the world. Not everybody has a 300 pound vise. Uh, but when you're pounding, that force drives straight down and that post won't give. So it gives you a really solid, sturdy anchor point uh, that, um, that you can really work off strong. That's why blacksmith vices, vice when you see them, the old ones, you know, they come down and, and they actually anchor in the concrete. They're really long. You'll see them. They're, you know, they're three feet long or so. And that's the reason is that they need, they don't want any give. They want that when they hit that hammer to that steel when they're forging, they want it to be absolutely rock solid. Um, to be efficient, so they're not wasting any energy. So that's it. I'm going to do another video here. I'll shoot it right here. That'll up upload uh, uh, sometime, maybe next. Uh, the latest axe that I built. Uh, this is a very job-specific axe. So, so I've kind of teased you with it a little bit, and uh, videos a couple back. But I want to talk a little bit about it, uh, what the philosophy is behind it, why I made it, and what it's for. So we'll uh, look forward to that. So we'll see you guys on the uh, next video. I think it's time for our Manly Manners. We haven't had a Manly Manners for a while. Sure, sure a, lot of, a lot of you like the Manly Manners. I like them too, they're good for all of us. It's, you know, a lot of these things in here, we don't necessarily, we're not hearing them new for the first time. We don't need to be, someone, some wise man said, we don't often need to be told, we simply need to be reminded. And so, so much truth in that. So today's Manly Manners is this, from the official Manly Manners book, Wrangler Star Manly Manners. Don't dwell on the beauty of other women if you know your wife to be sensitive to the point. There is no sense in rubbing sores, although some men seem to find a strange pleasure in it. I think it's very good advice. Very good advice. Bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, the woman that would do everything, would lay, her down, lay down her life for you. Uh, if that's something that uh, uh, is a sore spot for her, well, show her respect. And uh, we all could do better on that. Grow up a little bit and uh, concentrate our efforts and our focus and our desires on her. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, I got a great video for you. You're not going to want to miss this. If you're new to the channel, you want to watch my sister, the Fresh Pea, go through the Lumber Jack, Lumberjack, Lumberjill Challenge. Great video. So click on that, and I hope you enjoy it. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.